Welcome to my series of videos on statistics. And in this particular video, um, I'm going to teach on contingency analysis. Contingency analysis. Now, in the video after this, I'll be teaching extensively on correlation, all right? But just as a precursor, what I want you to know is that correlation just tells us that two variables are associated right? So when one variable is associated with another variable, it means that there is a significant correlation between them. Or when two variables move in the same direction, it shows that there is a significant association between the two variables, all right? There is a significant association between the two variables, okay? Now, here, when we have two variables that are categorical, we cannot compute the normal correlation because for categorical variables, all they have is frequencies. Remember, categorical variables are not numbers. So like if you want to check the relationship or the association between somebody's color preference and then his body size, if the person has a small body size, small and big, okay, small and big, they are categorical variables. They are not figures, okay? Then the person's color preference, like either black or white, are also categorical variables. They are not figures. So we want to check if somebody's body size in terms of, not figures, but in terms of small or big, is associated with his color preference, means that we are checking association or correlation between two categorical variables. Then you have to do what we call the contingency analysis, all right? Contingency analysis, okay? Contingency analysis. So here, there is an example here. Okay, there is an example here. Now, before we go into this example in detail, we must know how to state the null and alternative hypothesis for contingency analysis, all right? Now, here in this example, the study seeks to find whether there is a significant association between gender and source of funding. So gender is, categorical source of finding in terms of private or state is also categorical. So the figures you see in there, they are not numbers, they are just frequencies. So for instance, in this table, what we see is that there are 14 males that their source of funding is private. And then there are 43 males that their source of funding is from the state. So the total number of males is 57. Again, there are 141 females that their funding is private. Um, 23 females that their funding is from the state. Then the total female is 164, all right? Then what we have is the total private, total state. So the total private is 155, total state is 63. Now what would be the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis, one of the ways of stating it is that there is no significant association between gender and source of funding. And then alternative is that there is a significant association between gender and source of funding. Between gender and source of funding. 
Another way you could have put it is that gender is independent of funding. Like what, what, what is written here. So another way we could have put this hypothesis is that gender of yearbook is independent of college funding source. So if gender is independent of funding, so it means that there is no association between gender and source of funding, for example. Then the alternative is that gender is not independent of the funding source, which means that if something is not independent of another thing, it means that there is a significant association, right? Now, this table here, sometime in a question, you will not be giving the table, you'll be giving the figures. So like, let's say, total male is 57, and they will say the private male is 14. So you must know that the remainder will be the state male, all right? So some of the things you must know, sometimes the questions will be given in statement form, and you must be able to arrange them in this table, okay? And then this table is actually called the cross tabulation table. The, the contingency table or the cross tabulation table, all right? Now let's go to finding the chi square. Now here also, here also, the chi square is the observed value of a certain cell minus the expected value of that cell squared divided by the expected value of that cell, okay? And then here, here, the degree of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. Now, how do we find the expected value of a cell? The expected value of a cell is that particular cell Okay, that particular cell, the total of the row of that particular cell multiplied by the total of the column of that particular cell divided by the total sample size. Okay. So the total of the row of that particular cell times the total of the column of that particular cell divided by the total sample size. Okay, so let's, let's work it out. So if I want to find the expected value of male privates, let's watch it. Male privates, let me say MP. Male private, the row that the male private is on, the total of that row is 57, okay? Times the total of the, that column that it is on is 155. The total of the column is 155. The total of the row is 57. The total of the column is 155, all right? Divided by the total sample size 221. Okay, so 57 times 155 divided by 221. That is 39.98, okay? Then male state. When you come to male state, the expected value for male state, male state is row, the row total is 57. Male state is row total is 57. Its column total is 66, divided by a sample size of 221. So 57 times 66 divided by 221, you will get 17.02. So the expected value for male state is 17.02. Now let's do female private. Private is 164, right? Total of its row is 164 times the total of its column is 155. So the 141 here, the total of the row is 164. The total of its column is 155 divided by the total sample size. So we now have 164 times 155 divided by 221. And that is 155.02. Okay, 155.02. All right. Then finally, female 
state. So for female state, the expected value for female state, the female state ob observed value is here. Now its expected value will be the row two tau, which is one, six, four, times its column total is 66, right? Divided by total sample size of two, two, one. This is the total sample size of two, two, one. So 164 times 66 divided by 221. That'll be 48.98. 48.98. Okay. So this is how we get the expected value. So this is how come we're able to compute the expected value for each cell, all right? The expected value for each cell. That is how we compute the expected value for each cell. So if you want to compute the chi-square, the chi-square said the observed value of each cell minus its expected value over its expected value, then the numerator is squared, all right? So here, the observed value was 14. The expected value was 39.98. So we have 14 minus 39.98 squared divided by 39.98. That's the first cell. For the second cell, its observed value was 43 as given in the question. Its expected value was 17.02. So 43. Minus 17.02 squared divided by 17.02. Then the next value in the in the question, the actual value was 141. Then the expected value we computed was 115.02. So 141 by 15. I'm sorry. One five, sorry, one one five point zero two. Squared divided by one one five point zero two. Then the last one, the observed was 23, and then the expected was 48.98. all over 48.98. So the formula is every cell minus its expected value, like the frequency of a cell minus its expected value squared, all over its expected value. So you do it for each cell, then you add up, all right? So when you add up, you are going to get a computed, when you do this and you add up, you are going to get a computed, chi square of 76.19. We're going to get a computer chi square of 76.19. Okay. But we are testing it at alpha of 0 0.05 or yeah, alpha of 0 0.05. Okay. And remember, the degree of freedom is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So in this instance, we had two rows and we have two columns. So one times one is one. So I'm going to read 0 0.05 at a degree of freedom of one, all right, to get the critical chi-square. So degree of freedom of one and then um, 0 0.05. So the critical chi-square is 3.84. The critical chi square is 3.84. All right. So this will be our conclusion. So the critical chi square at a degree of freedom of one is 3.84. So our conclusion will be that since the computer chi square of 76.19 
is greater than the critical chi square a degree of freedom of one, which is three point um uh, three point eight four. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no significant, sorry, once we reject, that means that there is a significant association between Because we said that null hypothesis from the beginning, that there is no significant association, right? So this was a null hypothesis. So the, once we have rejected the alternative that there is a single association between gender and source of funding, okay? Between gender and source of funding. All right. So that's all about the contingency analysis. Let's take another example to make it clear. So this example says that company pays market wages, provide competitive benefits and offer attractive options for employees. However, several supervisors have complained that the employee absenteeism is becoming a problem. In response to these complaints, the human resource manager studied a random sample of 500 employees. One aim of this study is to determine whether there is a significant relationship between absenteeism and marital status, all right? So of course, these are two categorical variables, absenteeism, and marital status, they are categorical variables. So if you want to check whether there is a relationship between them or there's an association between them, remember you have to use the contingency analysis chi-square, right? Absenteeism during the period was broken down into three levels. So we have zero absentees group as a category, one to five absences group as a category, then over five absences group as a category. Then the marital status to have four categories, single, divorced, widowed, and married. Now, our null hypothesis definitely will be that absenteeism behavior, or there is no significant association between absenteeism behavior and marital status. Then the alternative will be that there is a significant association between absenteeism behavior and marital status, all right? Now, another way to state this is that the null will be absenteeism behavior is independent of marital status. This simply means that there is no association, right? Then the alternative says that absenteeism behavior is not independent of marital status. That means that there is a significant association, all right? So let's look at the, contingen the contingency table, sorry. All right, so here, there are a lot of rows and columns, okay? Remember, the categories, for the marital status are single, married, divorce, and widow. Then the absenteeism rate to, um, we have three categories, all right? Now, remember that if I want to find the expected value of this 84, Remember the formula is S row total times S column total divided by the total sample size, all right? So if I want to get it for 84, S row total is 200. S column total is 200. Then the total sample size is 500. So when you solve, you get 80, all right? If I want to get it for this 82, S row total is 200. S column total is also 200, all right? 
then the sample size is 500. If I want to get it for this 34, its row total is 200, its column total is 100, total sample size is 500. So you work through and get, you work through it and get the expected values for each. So these are the expected values, all right? For me, if I were you, I'll draw another table to show the expected values. So that when I'm doing the subtraction to the, the subtraction and squaring and dividing to get the chi square, I don't make a mistake. So sometimes it's good to replicate the question, the table. Then for each table, you write its observed value and then its expected value side by side. So that when you are doing the subtraction, you don't get it wrong, right? So these figures here are these figures here are the expected values, okay? And of course the figures on top are the actual values, the observed values, all right? So the ones shaded in blue are the expected values. You have to compute it for each cell. There are nine, I think there are 12 cells. You have to do it for each cell, okay? Now, having gotten the expected values, all right? You are now going to do the chi-square formula. So you also do, so like, let's say for instance, the 84 here, you now do 84 minus 80 all over 80. So like the numerator will be squared, right? Plus, then you come to this figure, 82 minus 80 squared all over 80. Because the formula is, the actual value of each cell minus the expected value squared, all divided by the expected value. Sigma, so we do it for all the 12 cells, all right? So plus here, it will be 34 minus 40 squared all over 40. So we do it to the last one. All right, we do it to the last one. The last one will be, so I'm doing three dots. So you do it for all the cells up to the last one. That'll be 14 minus 10 squared all over 14, all right? So when you do everything and you add up, when you do everything for all the 12 cells and you add up, the chi-square, the computer chi-square is 10.88333. You can try. Do it for each cell, use this formula, do it for each cell and add up. You get the computed chi square to be 10.8333. Sorry, 88333. Now, how do we get the degree of freedom? Remember that for us to go and read the critical chi square, we have to get the degree of freedom, right? The degree of freedom here is the number of rows minus what times the number of columns minus one, okay? So in this contingency analysis, the number of columns were three, as in the absentee rates, they were three. Okay, forget about the total. The total is not an actual column. It is something you do when you are solving the question. The number of columns were three, the number of rules, which is the marital status were four, all right? So here, four minus one, that's the number of rules minus one, and here, the number of columns, three minus one. So you now have three times two, and that would be six. So the degree of freedom is six, and we are testing at alpha of 0 0.05. So let's go and read it. The degree of freedom is six. So alpha of 0 0.05, the degree of freedom is six. So it means our critical chi-square is 12.59. Our critical chi-square is 12.59, right? And our computed chi-square, which you have to practice on your own, was 10.833. So since the computed chi-square is 10.8833, and then the, um, the critical chi-square is 12.59, all right? It is less than that. So since the computed one is 10.8833, which is less than the critical 
one of 12.59. We don't reject because it, it falls within the acceptance bound because it is less. So we don't reject. And then we conclude that. So here, if you, if you don't reject, it means that we will conclude with the now. All right. We will conclude with the now. Okay. If we don't reject, the now is saying that they are not, they are in, the, I mean, the now says that there is no significant association, right? The now says that they are no, the now says there is no significant association. That means that they are independent of each other. Okay, the, here says they are not independent. No, no. So it's supposed to be that, I mean, they are independent of each other or there's no, that's why I like to go with the, um, the now that says association. So the conclusion actually is that because we are concluding on the now, the conclusion will be that the absentee behavior is independent of marital status, or there is no significant association between them. All right, that will be the now for our conclusion. All right, okay. So this will bring us to the end of um, the contingency analysis. Um, in the next video, I'll be teaching on in the next two videos. I'll be teaching on correlation and regression fundamentals. All right. So thank you very much. Um, for staying with us up until this moment. Kindly subscribe, share, comment, and let's have your feedback. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and then also recommend the channel to others to subscribe. Thank you very much. And we'll meet in the next video. Thank you.